What's going on everybody, Dato Doi here today to talk about the newly revealed game Jump Force, a continuation to the J-Star series, and the reason I wanted to talk about it so much today is because I'm sure a lot of us are excited for this game to come out. I mean, who wouldn't be excited for a crossover game featuring a lot of our favorite anime characters? Even the stinger for the original E3 trailer showed light at the end, letting us in on the fact that they're going to get a little spicy with the roster for this game. The point is, the mere concept and roster for this game is enough to consider it an instant buy for me, and I know a lot of other people feel the same. But of course, as a game, you also want it to be really fun mechanically, so that when you're playing it, you just get enthralled with the match. Thankfully, even though the game is very early on in terms of its development, we are still able to see what their overall vision is for the game's gameplay within their playable demo that they have at E3. Just a quick disclaimer to say that I personally am not at E3, so I don't have any hands-on experience with the game. My one worry instead comes from what I'm seeing from the game play of other people playing. That worry is the fact that right now in the game there seems to be a lot of interactions between the characters, uh, overall system mechanics even, that just bring the entire pace of a fight down to a grinding halt. And that might not sound like too big of a deal at first, but in reality in these 3v3 anime arena fighters, the pace of the fight is extremely important to how fun the game feels in your hands. This is why I feel that arena style fighters such as this game operate better when the player has full control over their character and can move very quickly across the map and cover great distances in a short amount of time. And you can see elements of that in the gameplay for this game. For example, when you switch characters, the character you want to switch in will instantly dash towards your opponent before you can take control of them, allowing you to keep up the pace of the fight. And you can also move around from side to side relatively quickly. And there is a dash button, but again, when you want to instantly dash towards your opponent, it looks like it has a horrendous amount of startup time. I would say you should usually keep startup time relegated to moves that break guards or something that has a really powerful effect. For something as simple as a dash, it should definitely not be being beat out by a charged up heavy attack. And it also looks like when you and your opponent both opt to dash at each other when you're both far away, it'll trigger a cutscene where you clash fist and bounce off of each other, and that looks very cool and it's very flashy, but in reality it takes a long time and you just get reset to neutral and then the game practically restarts over again. In another arena fighter that I feel handles the formula for arena games very well, Naruto Ninja Storm, if both players dash at each other, you just bounce off of each other and can instantly get back into the fight. It's kind of like a quicker and less cinematic version of this. Don't get me wrong, this is cool, but when you're seeing this for the hundredth time, I guarantee you, you will not like it as much. And before we move away from the Ninja Storm comparison, I do want to say that I personally think Jump Force looks like it could use a little more speed and pretty much all of its movements. Everything from the supers to the movements to even the attacks look like they could be sped up by maybe like around half a second, uh, probably to give it that little bit of extra punch. Just make everything look like it's going a bit smoother and faster. If anything, the environments in this game are even bigger than the ones in Ninja Storm, so allowing the characters to be even faster than the ones in Storm wouldn't be too bad of an idea, at least in my opinion. The stage transitions that we can see in the gameplay also look like they're going at a way too slow of a pace. Uh, even the wind up to knock him out of the stage takes a while, but then Frieza flying through the air also takes up a pretty sizable amount of time. But one of the major issues I have with the pacing comes from after this spring break when Naruto has Frieza in an air combo. In Ninja Storm for example, if Frieza wanted to counter this he would click the substitute button, go behind Naruto, where he, where he would have the chance to hit, Naruto could do vice versa, unless Frieza didn't have enough meter, in which case he would just take a very short air combo, get knocked back to the ground, and then they would be back to fighting. In this game, however, it looks like there's a break system in which Frieza can just break it in the air and attack Naruto back. Now, that's not too bad, but in this case, if Naruto also has a break meter, then he can break Frieza's break, and I, I realistically, I've only seen it go up to twice, but I have no idea how many times this can repeat itself. We see it here a lot in the Soro versus Sasuke fight, in this one section. Soro breaks Sasuke's guard, Sasuke counters, Soro follows him in the air, Sasuke counters, Soro counters, Sasuke counters, and then we're back on the ground where even more slow movements take place, including a very long windup for a super. Overall, it's these mechanics that really slow down the pace of a fight, and I think that might be what's leading people to believe that the fighting system isn't all there, because we only see the few couple hits of a combo, and then for the majority of the rest of the game, it's just clashing and breaking. All they would really have to do to speed this up is either A, speed up the animation, or B, instead of breaking, maybe just teleport behind them like they already do on the ground. Really, I think the only thing this game could really benefit from is just a refocusing on making sure that the combat is fluid, and then they can work on other things such as really nice interactions, stage transitions and all that. Of course, this isn't me complaining. This is a very early development. Of course, they want to have cool things to show off at E3. So, 
So my personal hope is that fluidity comes a little later on in the development cycle, and when we're playing this in our hands after we just bought it, then we can all say it's very fluid and very fast and hopefully a lot of fun. Those are just my thoughts on Jump Force though. Let me know yours down in the comments below. I'm sure a lot of us are going to pick it up anyway because of the insane roster. Uh, let me know your dream roster down in the comments below, as well as your thoughts like I said. I'm Dr. Doya, I'll see you in the next video.